Hi! Thanks for stopping by here at How Stuff Works. I'm Allison Loudermilk, the Editor-in-Chief at How Stuff Works. We had a question. Maybe it's one you've had too. Whatever happened to 3D printing? Remember people got all excited about it? Maybe you even went out and bought one for yourself. Maybe, maybe you even printed out some of those cool Dungeons and Dragons figurines. We're not judging. Well, 3D printing is finally fulfilling on a lot of those early promises, especially in the area of healthcare. We talked to a doctor who's using 3D printing to help people walk. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Matthew Pombo. I'm an orthopedic uh, sports medicine surgeon on faculty at Emory University uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the cool new technology in 3D printing. One of the areas in our specialty where it's, it's really helped is in the total joint world. One of, the, one of the needs that I do is called conformis, which is it's a patient uh, specific knee replacement. It's really designed for an individualized patient. So there's a lot of imaging, CAT scans that we order before to get the bony architecture of the knee. And then what we do is we use an AutoCAD program, an engineering based tool to design a knee that's specific to a patient. So just like everyone's hair color, eye color, facial architectures are different. Uh, there's a lot of belief that each knee is a little bit different. Traditional knee replacements have been every knee's been the same and you make some cuts on the bone and you find a bunch of parts and whichever one fits the best those are the ones you use for a knee replacement but they're the same you know size and shape uh, in everyone's knee so a lot of the new technology is using some of this imaging and tailoring and custom making total knee replacements to each individual patient and how their native structure of their knee is the way I decide to do a 3D printed knee or not is really based on how much deformity is in the knee. If somebody has a lot of bowing to the knee or a lot of contraction to the knee, where I'm going to need some things that are a little more advanced. From the medical side of things, you know, I think we're going to be using 3D models for ACL reconstructions. We're going to be doing 3D cartilage mapping for cartilage issues. Um, I think from a from a hip replacement, it's, it's going to evolve into a patient-specific hip replacement to make sure that the sockets are put in perfectly. In terms of uh, the material for total joints, you know there are several. Most of the ones that are fairly standard in the knee are an alloy, or where we take metal alloys such as cobalt chrome is the main component of most total joints. There's some components of nickel and titanium and there's a, an alloy to get a specific uh, type of metal. You know, in between there's a, a polymethyl methacrylate, which is almost like a plastic or a, a plastic Teflon that has very, very low wear characteristics. So that that's where I would say over the last 15 years, uh, the most technological advancements have come in how we make that plastic because the way total joints traditionally have worn out been through what we call aseptic loosening or loosening of the total joint. And what causes that loosening is the wear particles from the plastic. So we've really focused on how to lower the amount of wear that, that these plastics uh, incur over the use of a knee. Um, there are some early benefits of motion, uh, knees don't feel as wobbly because we're designing it for patients and there is some early functional improvement. Uh, whether they actually last longer, that's going to take us 20 or 30 years to follow the ones we put in. Wow, that's cool! Thanks a lot, Dr. Pombo. What's your experience with 3D printing? Have you ever printed out anything really cool? Join the discussion or visit us at HowStuffWorks.com.